Hello, my name is Megan Dodson. I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Northern Indiana. And this is the 2019 spotter training online videos. Why do we need spotters? And also a brief overview of radar. So why do we need spotters? Your accurate reports help us to verify what we see on radar here at the National Weather Service. It also adds credibility to our warnings. Research has shown that the combination of our warnings with accurate reports from the an observer uh, result in better action taken by the public. Here's a brief overview of radar. The radar sends out a beam of energy that intersects things like particles like hail, rain, or snow, and then sends us back an image. It can measure things in the horizontal and the vertical. The image looks like this when we get it back. Something you usually see on TV is reflectivity. Smaller particles like the blues and the purples are light rain, dust, or bugs. On the other side of the spectrum, we have big particles like hail, big raindrop, and other things. On the velocity, what we see is the speed of those particles moving away from the radar or towards. So in this case, towards the radar is in green, red is, in, is away from the radar, so that indicates there's some kind of rotation going on. And that's typically what we're going to see with a tornado or a strongly rotating storm. So what happens is the radar samples the thunderstorm itself, not what's happening below the storm. So as the distance between a storm and the radar increases, the radar samples higher up in the storm. This can result in us missing key features beneath the radar beam. So when you look at storm B, that tornado is long below the, the bottom of the cloud where the beam is up here. So the beam's only going to catch that hail, um, whereas here, you know, you might actually miss some of the hail, but you could see some good rotation in the lower levels. So this is kind of what it looks like as far as ranges go. Generally about, once you get further out away from our radar, it's about six to 11,000 feet off the ground. So that beam is going up higher and higher as it goes further away from the radar. And luckily for us, we actually have a lot of radars we can look at around us to kind of look at in addition to our radar to interpolate what's going on. And also, of course, that's where your reports help us as well. So here's an example of White County where there was a tornado in July 2017. So at this point, the beam is far off the ground. It's in that outer ring. And you can actually see it's very kind of degraded and pixelated data. And also the rotation looks very weak, especially if you compare it to the one on the last slides. And that's because the main rotation with any kind of tornado is going to be lower to the ground. And this is very high up. So it's really not capturing that. So as that distance between the storm and the radar increases, the radar samples up higher in the storm. So meanwhile, at the surface, this is what they're seeing, the tornado. This can also happen with lake effect. The radar beam often overshoots the shallow snow bands, and the returns barely show up on radar, if at all. So for example, we have that outer ring of the radar again near Chesterton and Valparaiso, there's some light reflectivity that might suggest there's some maybe light precipitation or maybe nothing at all even reaching the ground. But as you can see on the on the actual webcam, I-94 at US-20 interchange is seeing quite a bit of snow. Beam broadening can cause the resolution to decrease as you get further away from the radar. On radar, the storm appears less detailed further away. So it's kind of like a flashlight. The light is less focused as you get further and further away from the radar. So here's a pop quiz. Which of these two storms, A or B, would be better resolved or have greater detail, and why? Storm A. It's closer to the radar. Storm B is, would be more impacted by beam broadening. Here's a real life example from Alabama in 2011. The beam broadening makes it difficult to ID small scale features like hook echoes. So you can see the hook is very well defined in the storm down to the southwest of BMX. Whereas up here, it's not as well defined, it's very pixelated. I mean, you can blow up the, the images, although you know the original image was a little lower resolution, so it doesn't look that much better. But you can definitely see there's more detail here than here. So not only can we take that information that you give us, we send it out in storm reports so that our partners can have it, but we also can adjust our warnings based on the input you give us. So for example, if you call in a tornado, then we can change our tag at the bottom of our warning that says tornado dot 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 radar indicated to observed. Um, and then based on the information you give us and what we're seeing on radar, we can decide, you know, is that going to be a more considerable tornado or is it more of a, you know, smaller EF-01 that's limited damage, but then when you go to more of an EF-4, EF-5, it's catastrophic. So we can assign a tag to that and any hail that you report, we can also adjust that as well. So the bottom line is that our warnings plus your ground truth equals a better likelihood that the public will take action 
Some of the lesser known things that we do with the data, uh, we use it to improve our performance. We calculate verification statistics. Uh, so if we miss a storm, maybe you send us a report, we didn't have a warning on it, we can go back and say, well, what did we miss? The other thing is if you report uh, severe weather to us, so you say you have hail of 1.5 inch diameter, um, we know we can verify a warning that we issued. It's also used for historical records and those are used for research. It's also used for emergency preparedness. The records are used in mitigation, planning, and response activities. But they don't just help us, they help the media, they help emergency management, and others that need to make important decisions during severe weather. Here's an example of a spotter sending in a report uh, to a ham radio operator, Jay Farlow, who was able to report it to us in NWS chat. I have a tornado, tornado on the ground. It just lifted. Fricker and Doty Road, Allen County. It's back on the ground, multi-vortex tornado. Say again that location, I was busy on another channel. We're in Doty Road, looking north. I have confirmed tornado on the ground. Okay, Doty Road in what room? Doty and Wicker. Okay, I've got it, typing down. So here's where Jay was able to report it to us in NWS chat. So what worked? Michael gave us the time, the event, and the location. So he reported what he was seeing, where he was, and it was right at that moment, so that was the time. And those are the things we need for a good quality report from spotters. So in this case, we had good communication set up and good report. Now we have two reports of two funnel clouds at State Road 37 at St. Joe Center Road in Allen County. So again, that takes us back into the Allen County and Fort Wayne side of the activity that's ongoing up there. Let's go back to this storm. Again, that latest report, two funnel clouds, St. Joe Center Road and State Road 37, that same area where we had uh, gotten confirmed reports of rotation earlier on. So as you can see, the reports that were sent in were also able to be conveyed to the media, and that's good um, so they can get the word out to the public. So that's all for this video. If you want to watch another video for the 2019 Spotter Training, go back to the main page and click on the link. Thanks, and have a great day.